glad you guys are here today. You wake up to that thunder and lightning, and I think there's nobody going to be here. So, <laughs> anyways, you know, I looked at this series that's been going on, and I, well, before I start, then let's pray. <laughs> Father, we're just so grateful. The Lord will never, ever, ever take for granted what it means that we can worship each and every Sunday. Father, we're thankful. This is always a reminder. This is a resurrection day that gives us hope. I don't know what everybody's going through today, but Jesus, you do. And Lord, you know more than ever what you've given us is so much more powerful than we could ever imagine, and that's the Holy Spirit that guides us and directs us. Father, we thank you. The Lord, speak to our hearts today. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, I'm going to make this a third series. I was running out of time. My daughter always gets on. She, she, Alexis gets on me about, Dad, you look at the clock too much, you know. So, but it, I don't, I don't want to lose you guys. Uh, and so I thought, okay, we'll just make this th- a th- three-part series on what keeps us safe. And if there's two things, if the Lord would take me home, there's two things I want everybody to always remember. One, which you already know about, and that is, If you just take five minutes a day to stay in God's word and feed off that and you meditate through that through the day, it's amazing how your day changes and how much wisdom that you gain and the calmness that you gain from that. Just a few minutes a day. And that's all I'd want you to remember. And secondly, the other thing is, is to know what is within you. What is within you is the power of the Holy Spirit. Let me give you an example. If you've seen this uh, viral, it's been gone viral on YouTube. There's a little girl, and she's sitting. It's true. The lady's taking a video of it. There's a little girl sitting on the wave. There's waves coming at the ocean, and she's just sitting there with the waves lapping back and forth. And her, her, the family's golden retriever is there with her. So the dog's there watching her. And all of a sudden, the waves start to take her a little further, a little further. It's not really any danger, but to that dog, knows something's going on. And so the girl gets, the waves are just taking her out a little bit further. And, and, and she's going out a little bit ways, but the mom's right there. But anyway, so she goes out far enough to that dog, goes out to where that little girl is, and, and, and very gently with, her, with the, her teeth, the dog's teeth, grabs the back of that little girl's bathing suit and pulls her all the way up on the beach. And I thought, wow. And this is what so many people say. You know, isn't that amazing, the instinct that, that an animal or a dog has to do that? But I want you to get this. Who made that dog? God did. God put that in that animal as it, it, it's part of that animal to know where there is danger and to, to the protection that is already coming from that animal because it's God-given. When we accept Christ as our Savior, this was what I want you to know. What you have that was given to you, that Holy Spirit is in you. Recognize the Spirit of God that's in you. Guides you, directs you, protects you, anything that you can think of. When you know that you're in danger, what does it do? Well, let's look at John chapter uh, 16 and verse 13. John 16, 13. However, and this is, this is Jesus talking about the Holy Spirit, part of the Trinity when he comes, when Jesus has been glorified, Jesus is gone and is in heaven after the resurrection, after the time he has spent here on earth. And while he's here, he says these things. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. What, what is the Lord telling us here? The, the Lord is sharing with us today what's so important to know is what does the Holy Spirit always tell you and me? Always. What do we say the last couple of weeks? 
hey, I don't care how bad it is, I don't care how ugly it is, just tell me the truth. When we have the truth, we can go forward or we can make a decision. So in our life today, the first thing we want to know is that you and I have something very different than the world doesn't have. What you have as a believer with the Holy Spirit, you have authority. And the reason that you have authority is because you have the truth. Let me say that again. The reason that you have authority and you can make a decision and that decision is going to be right in those circumstances is because you are guided what Jesus is telling us about the Holy Spirit. You are guided in truth. Give you another example. Uh, Whether it's your spouse or you've been married long enough or you have kids, one or another, or whatever it might be. If you've had and know uh, being a parent or had a parent, what happens? That parent knows you better than anybody and has already been able to see a little bit further ahead. And all we have to do is ask and be patient in the spirit, and God will direct you. That's a promise that we have. Jesus has given us a promise that you have right now in your heart. And the reason I'm just, I'm just here to remind you, you know, people ask me what I do. I say, I just try and remind people. That's all I do for a living, just remind people, to remind you what you have. What we have is the Holy Spirit. What does the Holy Spirit do? The Holy Spirit is always going to tell you the truth. Whether or not we go through with that decision in the right way is going to depend on have we relied on the Holy Spirit. Why is that so important? Because the Holy Spirit is never going to lie to you. And the Holy Spirit, as Jesus tells us here, which is so important, he's going to tell us the truth, but he's going to tell us about what's going to happen. Now, isn't it crazy what we're living in in the world? I mean, every every week we wonder, what is going on? You know, the whole world would change if the only thing that ever happened was all we ever did was just tell the truth. You know, I'm not even going to go through, I'm not even going to start talking about politicians and all that stuff, not going down that road. But if we just told the truth. What happens when you have that and the Holy Spirit's dwelling within you, you're going to have a direction. Here's what's important. In your personal life or what we see happening in the world, Jesus tells us that the spirit that we have as a believer is going to guide you in the future in your life. That, that should be a calming effect. I can't see tomorrow. You can't see tomorrow. But Jesus tells us one of the most important things the Holy Spirit gives us is he's going, think about last week, how many hundreds of decisions that you made in a week's time? Yes, no, I'm not sure that uh, I'll get back with you. All these different decisions. And if we just realize the Holy Spirit is we're in the Word every day, is directing us on all those decisions. And all those decisions take us down the right road. God is telling us today, it's not as complicated as, as the way that we make it. If we want to understand what safety means, what it means and how to, to feel secure and safe in our world, know that the Holy Spirit is within you and it's going to guide you through all the things and the darkness in this life. It's like this. We can either walk in the dark in our house at night, or all we have to do, it's real easy to go and just flick the switch. It makes things so much easier, right? How many times do we follow or something or we run into something? I smacked my toe right at the end of the bed two nights ago. Wham, fell right on the bed, you know. Complete dark, no wonder, you know. As the thing, what, it was my fault. He just didn't have to, just didn't go over and turn the light on. That's all he had to do. All we have to do is with the Holy Spirit is recognize what we have within us and we're going to be able to, even though that you don't know what's going to happen a month from now, there's a peace that you have knowing that the Holy Spirit within you is going to guide you, not in just a little bit, not in a lot, 
but in all truth. And when you have that, you have something different than the world. You have authority. That authority gives you wisdom. When we have wisdom, and we, can, we can solve a lot of things, whether it's in your personal life or work or your family situations or health situations or what to do or being anxious about something. We all go through it, and we all need direction. The Holy Spirit has been given to us. We didn't have to work for it. The day that you accept Christ as your Savior, the Holy Spirit, why does someone say as soon as they accept Christ as their Savior, if you've known people and they know Jesus and they become a new believer, and they'll tell you how they used to read the Bible. It didn't make sense to them. And then once they become a Christian, they say, wow, this is, I can't believe what this, I, every time I open it up, it just speaks to me. That's because the Holy Spirit is connecting with you. All right, let's look, at, let's look at another verse. I want to give you an actual biblical example because you're always, you're going to have a circumstance if it's not next week or next month or whenever it might be, you're going to have to make a decision on something. And you're not sure, you're not sure how, how to make that decision. And it's getting closer to whatever it might be. And you still don't have a decision. Well, what's a guideline here? Well, look at Luke chapter 12, verses 11 and 12. Luke chapter 12, verses 11 and 12. Let me give you a little background because the disciples were followers of Jesus, there was always a threat of persecution. As we get closer to the Lord coming back, we find it, even though there is a calmness in your life, even though that there is a authority in your life, there's still, uh, what can I say in society? Let me put it this way. There, there's a... There's a a threat against you. You feel it when someone knows that you're a believer or not and they're coming against you. It might be your boss, it might be whoever it might be, and they, they don't like that you are a believer and you're not sure how you're going to handle that situation. Well, that's what many times, that's how the disciples were in those situations. And Jesus gave an insight to them that he gives to us today on how we're going to handle that. Because all of us go through something, and that is we use this word worry. We all get anxious. We all worry. We all do it. What does God tell us in those situations? Well, look at Luke chapter 12, which he shares with them, which he shares with us, verses 11 and 12. Now, when they bring you to the synagogues and the magistrates and authorities, do not worry about how or what you should answer or what you should say. For the Holy Spirit will teach you in that very hour what you ought to say. Do you ever get in those situations and you rehearse it like a month ahead of, over and over and over and over again, what you're going to say, what you're going to do, how you're going to do all these things. And you just go over and over and over again. Wait a minute. The Lord's given us the Holy Spirit. The Bible tells us God's word that don't work. Tomorrow's got enough problems of itself. Let it go. Focus on today. And the calmness that he gives you today with his word through your spirit is this. Don't worry about it. Because right when you need what you need to say in that situation, the Holy Spirit's going to tell you exactly what to say. I was in a very, um, uh, try to keep this journey, very, very uh, kind of a difficult situation a few months ago. And it was in a position where all the authorities in our, our community were there, all of them. Anybody you could think of that was represented in our city was there. And I had to speak before them and, and, and what I was going to say and whether it was going to sway them one way or another, what I was going to say. And <clears throat> I went over and over and this and that and this and that, you know. And, and by the time I got up, you know, you know, you're, you know I'm supposed to speak and... It's downtown or for all these people. And I just, the Holy Spirit just took over. I didn't speak that long. I didn't say it much, but I just felt the Holy Spirit just, just stepped right in. Took right over. 
What I want to encourage you today is about the Holy Spirit is within you in those situations. Don't waste time and energy on what you're going through. In other words, when you know that you're going to have to be in a situation where you're going to have to say something, the Lord tells us in those situations, I don't care if it's, it's, it's personal or if it's professional. The Lord says, in that situation, if you recognize the Holy Spirit within you, right at that time, he will speak. God will speak for you. I mean, that's, a, that's an amazing thing. You know, you guys hear me say this a lot because I study a lot about this, about what our teachers are going through in, in our society. And I don't think there's, other than a police officer, I don't think there's anybody under more pressure today than, than, than believer, teachers that are believers. What do they need and what, if I would be able to talk to them as a group and tell them as the believers in our, in our school system is this. Yeah, all these decisions every day you're underneath all this pressure. Uh, this, you know, this kid, whatever he's, you know, one day he's a boy, next day he's a girl. You know, I, I mean, that's what they're facing. I'm just being honest with you. How do they deal with all these things they're dealing with? Take a deep breath. The, the profession that you love, you want to, do you still love it? Do you still want to do it? Okay, if that's the case. The Lord in those situations is going to give you exactly the word that you need to say when you need to say it. What happens? Let's back it up at the beginning. Authority. That person doesn't even know what you're speaking to or what you're having to say that you're actually speaking with so much authority because it's coming from heaven. It's not coming from you. Whatever that situation is, I was just applying that because I read so much about what our school systems are going through today and the pressure that teachers are. I'm just giving you that as an example, but you can take it into your own life. The Holy Spirit is within you, as this series concludes, to keep you safe. Not only to keep you safe, but to calm you. The Holy Spirit calms us to know in this world that we live in that he is always going to guide us because he guides us with his truth. When he guides us with his truth, we can never go wrong. I always tell people when they, 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 get a, they didn't get a job, they wanted this job so bad and they get a job. I said, and I tell him, you know, it was a, you know Jesus, right? He said, yeah. I said, no doesn't always mean no. Always remember that. No doesn't always mean no. When the Lord's involved, he's always going to do what he tells us in the book of Revelation. God opens the door for you. Nobody can shut it. Now, I don't care, you know, if you're, you, I don't care if you're in junior high or I don't care if you're older in life. We all have these decisions we have to make. And we're going to go in them with a calmness knowing that the Holy Spirit is going to give us the words to say. And the same as Jesus told his disciples, we are followers, we are believers of him. He's going to give you the same words to say. What I'm sharing with you today is I'm just as guilty of it as you are. Don't worry and wish your life away. I can't wait till this hour. I can't wait. We all do it. But just know that the Holy Spirit wants to you and I to enjoy today. The devil comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And we can take that in any aspect you want to, whether it's within your spirit to discourage you or whether it's destroy your home or destroy your kids, or whatever it might be. But Jesus has come to give you life, and to give you life, and to give it to you more abundantly. Our, can we say that? Can we live that way? I believe that we can. But sometimes it, it, it's a struggle. And I'm just here to remind you today that the Holy Spirit is protecting you. It's built within you as a believer, just like that dog just knew instinctly what to do because that dog was made from heaven, was made from God. He's going to tell you, the Holy Spirit, exactly what you need to do, when you need to do it. All you have to do is just this one thing. Recognize the Holy recognize the Spirit that you have. Let's look at the last verse today. We're going to turn back over in the book of John, John chapter... Uh, 14, John 14, and verse 26 and 27. 
But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all the things I said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, and neither let it be afraid. Isn't that our society today, fear? Everybody's afraid, everything that's going on. You know, we can see everything in the world that's happening today, whether it's here in our own, our own city or whether it's over in the Middle East. What the Lord wants us to know today, I, you know, all those years, I don't know, 50 years or so, my dad was, being a pilot, flew everywhere all around the world himself. And, and, and a lot of his buddies that he used to run around with were so scared of fr- flying. And he always used to tell me, this. He, he said, son, the way I, I got them not to be fearful is I would just tell them, go learn how to fly. And you won't be afraid of it anymore. It's just that simple. All we have to do as a believer is to know that we are a believer. Just, it's that simple. We are a believer, and Jesus is telling us that as a believer, he's, you know, there's things that the Bible verses you have in your heart that maybe you forgot about, and right at that instant, you're gonna, it's going to come back to you. The Lord's going to bring it back to you. The Spirit's going to work, and the Holy Spirit is going to calm you or direct you, and anything that you, anything, God says in all things, Anything that you have to look at and what you're going to have to do to make a decision. And even if you go to make the wrong decision, the Lord knows your heart. He's going to steer you in the right direction. Because his door for you and for me never closes. And if it does close, it's supposed to close. And we can't lose. All we have to do is the Bible says is to know as a believer what we have. The Holy Spirit, and the Spirit has authority in this world, and no matter what situation you're in, he always is able to give you the words to say in those situations, because you have built in, and all I'm here to do is remind you today, is that Spirit is there to calm you, to protect you, to guide you in every area of your life. Recognize what we have as a spirit. And you know what the outcome is today? We just read it. It's peace. Isn't that what the whole world wants today? Peace. You know, the Bible says at the end of times, they'll, they'll, they'll even take that mark in the tribulation just to hopefully have a little peace. Peace. They're signing, they're signing their death warrant, the mark of the beast, but they'll take it even as the, as the devil and the Antichrist is going to say, hey, hey, you, everything's going to be fine. You just take this mark. They think they're still going to be able to eat and all those things. No, he's just lying to them. That's all the devil does to you and to me. Yeah, that's all he's ever going to do is lie. And all the Lord is ever going to do is tell you the truth. And the outcome is what I close with today is just that. Know that you have something that's so amazing that you're able to lay your head on your pillow at night. And if you're not older and your body's not aching all over the place, that, that you have peace. And you know what? There's a, I mean, you can't buy it. You can't get it any other way. Where does that come from? It's built within you as the Holy Spirit. As you are directed by God's Spirit and you open this book up, he's going to give you the exact verses and words that you need, exactly what you're going to face this week. Man, I got so many phone calls last week of bad situations that people are in, difficult, that they weren't facing a week ago. What do I do? What do I tell them? I tell them that they have the Holy Spirit as a believer in the midst of what they're going through. Even though they don't have the answer, he's going to guide them in all truth. And all that time, he'll give them peace. 
Man, that, we, we have what, we have what, you know, this world, if you have enough money, you can buy any amount of comfort that you want to buy, any amount. You know, I was at a car dealership not too long ago, and I always, like, messing around with cars and stuff, and there was a, there was a Rolls Royce sitting in there, and it was, uh, uh, I don't know, $350,000, you know. I was looking at this tank. It was like a tank, and looking at this thing, and I thought, you know what? You know, they had, a, they had the little thing, remeds all the way around it so you couldn't get close to it and the whole thing. I, you know, somebody, whoever, she was already sold, somebody's going to buy it. I'm thinking... Okay, you can drive that, whatever. But there's, there's only comfort there. Whatever is going through that person's mind, however much that person might have, whatever status they are in society, no matter what the world looks at them and says, man, I would love to, have, love to be in that position, you don't know how that person might want to trade positions with you because you have the peace that they've been searching for all their life. Know today as I close, please. Holy Spirit is within you. The catalyst of it is right here. It works together, and God guides you, and all the way along, even though you don't have what you might want to have, you have peace knowing that Jesus is in control and knowing without a doubt when the Bible says safety, no one can pluck you out of his hand. Nothing in this world, anything the devil can try and do, no matter what is wiped away from you, no matter how lonely you might seem, no matter what position you are in life, somebody might not even know what you're going through, the devil wax, 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 and he never stops. But Jesus has you in the palm of his hand, and you're eternally secure. And today as I close, if you can't look at anything else, look up and know that your redemption draws nigh. And before we know it, the Lord's going to call us home forever and ever and ever. That's the peace that we have as a believer. Let's pray. You know, God's word tells us, let peace rule in your hearts. And that happens through the Holy Spirit. And no matter how comfortable the world might seem today in certain situations, we don't have peace. We have that as a believer. But maybe there's so many that we have watching on YouTube or are here live today. I mean, there's just so many different apps that we have that people are tuning in. If you don't have that assurance of direction, of hope, of knowing what's going to happen in your life here or forever, I want you to know that Jesus gives you an answer. And it's Him. He is your answer. God had a plan and his plan was to redeem all of us if we're willing and if you're watching here today and say Dallas I would love to know and to have the peace and the spirit that you're talking about the Bible says God's word for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved and all you have to do is pray with me right now. Don't try and figure it out. The Spirit of God is walking beside you right now, tapping on the door of your heart. And he's just saying, if you're willing, I'll come in. And if you are, all you have to do is pray right now with me. Jesus, I don't understand everything, but I believe who you are. That you're God's son until you died on the cross a couple thousand years ago just for me. And right now, Jesus, forgive me for all of my sins. I believe you died on a cross for me. Forgive me, Jesus, for all of my sins. And I ask you to come into my heart to be my Lord and Savior. 
and from this day forward, help me to live by your resurrection power. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you, Lord, for those that are watching, those that have accepted you today. And Lord, as we always conclude with our fellowship here, if there's someone here also right in the midst right now, maybe a friend will bring a friend and I can lead them in your word and pray that same prayer with them because you tell us for whosoever, anyone, Lord. So, Father, we conclude this service today as Ben leads us with a closing song, an invitation. If someone here doesn't know you, may they step forward and I can show them in your word and they can accept you today and they can feel safe and secure forever and ever. We ask it in your name, Jesus.